was it again? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> What's your name? I don't know. What is my name? Hi, my name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stefan, and this is Kelly, Karen. his wife. That's true. What are we talking about today? Uh, today we are going to be talking about sailing. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, an upcoming trip that we have that's uh, going to be happening shortly. Very soon. Uh, I think Kelly wanted us to talk about some of our couple of previous trips and perhaps some of our long-term, long-term plans. I think we should start with long-term goals. Why are we going sailing? Um, first of all, I'm just going to point out we live in Minnesota and it is March or February 24th, almost March. And it's snowing out right now. And I don't know, not a huge fan. How about you? Uh, I, I don't really like the snow anymore. Um, so <laughs> you're talking about our motivation for our, part of our motivation for our current trip? Or well, just long -term? for long-term goals. So um, Kelly was born and raised in Minnesota. I moved here. Um, but, and, and we, we both have to be here for uh, family reasons at the moment. Their but, names are Sophia and Jackie yeah. and Alex. So, uh, but our sort of our pre-retirement and retirement goals would uh, not involve staying here. Um, we, don't, we don't really want to do that. So uh, a goal or a, a sort of a, a dream or passion of mine before we met was that uh, I would, uh, you know, maybe live on a on a sailboat one day and um, use that as a way to uh, you know to travel a little bit and um, see the world a little bit um, and uh, we are so you know we've taken that on as a jointly shared goal now um, I have some sailing experience not as much as I'd like but um, I do have some and um, we are uh, so we're working on getting uh, Kelly uh, up to the you know same kind of rough level of experience, so that uh, when we are free to uh, leave this uh, frozen hellscape um, at some point, uh, that we'll uh, twenty twenty five we'll at least have the uh, we'll have the skills to be able to do that, um, and the time between now and then we can use to uh, you Practice. know get more skills and to accumulate the resources that we'll need to be able to do that, so that we can downshift um, careers and, and things like that. So Now, I'm not just jumping in board the sailing thing. I am from Minnesota and grew up around the water and lakes and stuff. i never really gone sailing before I met him, but I've always loved the water. My plan in retirement, divorce, so I wasn't sure where I was going to be by retirement. I was just going to get a motorhome and like travel that way. So this is just like a motorhome on the water. It's much cooler and we can travel a lot more. So totally on board with that. <clears throat> Uh, along with the certification process, my very first sailing trip was to the BBI, um, and that's where I got my first ASA certification, and that's who we go through for our certifications. That's where Stefan took his classes um, through a local company that does, does the ASA certification. Um, so ASA stands for American Sailing Association. Uh, there are you know, they're one of the major global certifiers. There's also, uh, I think it's the Royal Yachting Association in the UK that maybe their standards are a bit more internationalized, but they're roughly equivalent. Um, the reason those certifications matter, um, it's nice to have, you know, we both, we're people that, you know, we like education and we like learning, so we, we value gaining that knowledge from, uh, you know, from, from classes. Um, kind of make sure that you don't have too many holes and that you're in your experience and that you're focusing on the things that uh, are important and there's obviously there's a sequence of classes that sort of build on each other. Um, but secondly, uh, for uh, chartering, it's kind of a requirement. Uh, there's a minimum level of education that's required for most uh, charter companies to be able to charter the boat yourself without a captain. Um, because we don't have our own boat yet. Yes. And, and then also for, um, you know, for eventually for things like insurance and things like that, when you do have your own boat, um, they, they want to see experience, more experience than we currently have, but um, we're not there yet. Um, 
and also uh, you know certifications that you know kind of complement that experience as well. So. And right now, like you said, we're going we're planning for a trip to Antigua. Uh, and I am, he's not taking any classes. Actually, nobody we're going with is taking any classes right now. One of the couples, um, the gentleman, he was in my, he was taking the same classes as me when we went to the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm taking coastal navigation, which isn't an on, I mean, it's all classroom work and, you know, maps and tracking your course and directing and all that stuff. Um, but I want to practice that while we're sailing. So um, I'm going to buy a chart and do some practicing while we're there. And then when we get back, I'm going to take my test for coastal navigation. Um, and part of the reason, too, why I think it's important, aside from everything Stefan said, obviously that's important as well, but we're going to be sailing, the two of us alone, on a boat. Um, something could happen to either of us, and it's important that the other one know how to run the boat um, and know what to do if something does happen. There's going to be times when we might be out of sight of any other land or any other boat. I mean, that's our goal, is to be able to do big crossings and stuff, too. So. I need to have the certifications and the practice is really important. That's why I love these trips. Um, practice so that I know what to do in case of emergency or if I'm on for the night shift and you're sleeping. Sure. Yeah. On their fun trips too anyway. I mean, if you're going to go on a vacation anyway, you might as well do something that, uh, you know, takes care of both things. So. Um, when we, we first were going to go, so the Virgin Islands, here's a cruising guide for the Virgin Island cruising guides. Um, if you've ever been sailing or whatever, these are awesome. They tell you everything about all the ports and traveling and things you need to look out for. Um, yeah, you really need to have one of these if you're going to go sailing. Probably even on a power boat, you have a cruising guide as well. I'm assuming. Yeah, there's nothing specific about sailboats. They make them for, uh, which I guess we would consider our home area would be Lake Superior, so there's even one for here. I mean, we know our way, way around places like Duluth and Bayfield because we live, you know, within a few hours of those, but it um, doesn't hurt to have uh, a little extra background knowledge as well. Yeah. Um, they're just kind of, you know, fun resources to have. And we wanted to go to the BVI this year, but the hurricane sort of destroyed the boat that we had. And we yeah, couldn't so get a boat, so. This is, we're in 2018 now. Hurricane Irma uh, was in, I remember what month, but it was in 2017. Um, you know, it, the Antigua that we ended up going to, uh, it was re relatively uh, spared uh, by Irma and Jose. Uh, and who was it? I can't remember what the third one was. Um, some, you know, the other islands that were not, uh, the um, British Virgin Islands in particular, Tortolo, that we were, uh, had previously charted out of and we're going to again. Uh, Okay. this year uh, was not you know they got a lot of boats destroyed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the infrastructure isn't there really to support visitors yet which is a shame because you know that by us having to move our trip that means that the uh, income that that would have generated and put into the local economy there is not going to happen but although it does sound like non sailing people I mean people are starting to travel there again it's just like yeah. for sailing travel if we had um, um. yeah if we if we were better equipped, you know, if we didn't have to charter a boat, if we had our own boat and things like that, I think we'd, we'd so be better. Yeah. Well, we'd be better, we'd have a better chance of being able to pull that trip off. As it is, our charter company canceled um, uh, canceled our trip, so yep. we, we weren't able to do it, and that was, you know, that was the primary reason. And the people who were sailing with that gentleman's camping and his wife, have, been, have they been to Antigua before? I think they they did uh, so two so our captain uh, and his wife for this trip uh, friends of ours they um, had done a uh, they did an Atlantic crossing one year and they went from they left from Antigua oh they left from there okay so they've they've been there before and they have some local knowledge um, mostly we just picked Antigua because there were boats available and yeah and uh, when we got our we got most of our uh, money refunded from the, which is very nice of them, uh, from the uh, charter company and the BVI. Uh, so we were, you know, we just needed a, another place that had boats, and Antigua was, was one of those. And we've never been there, and hey, might as well. I've not been there before. Oh, I'm excited to go anywhere, so. Um, so when we thought we were going to Antigua, um, I bought a cruise guide for there. There's a lot of islands in that whole area, but this one covers Antigua and the areas where we're going to go, so I've been reading up. Um, one of the things that I get really excited about is the whole provisioning the boat. Um, none of the other people we're traveling with are vegans, although they're, you know, they're open-minded. But I, I'm always, the first thing I did when I got this is like look to see where the local 
a grocery store or what, where we were going to be able to buy our supplies for food for the boat. Um, availability in some of these places is different. Some of the grocery stores are smaller. I mean, you just never know what you're going to get. But this time it's really lucky uh, the, where we're going to be starting out. They have a huge grocery store. What is the name of the bay? I can't remember again. Um, the Harbor? Yeah, the Harbor. Uh, Jolly Harbor. Yeah, Jolly Harbor. So we're, we're starting at a Jolly. And they have a big grocery store there, so that'll be awesome. Another thing I did is, with this trip, we're probably going to be eating at restaurants. A lot in the evenings in particular. So I went from each harbor around the island and went online just to find where the vegan options were available or where they, you know, where they had vegetarian or vegan options. And I have that all written in the back of my my book, so wherever we are, even if I don't have an internet connection, I should be able to see what restaurants, and they actually have quite a few in Antigua, like I don't know, a lot of restaurants at different places around the island, so I don't think we're going to have a hard time. I mean, where we live in Minnesota, like there's, we can't really go out to eat, because unless we want to eat like lettuce. So this is exciting when you can travel and it makes it a little bit easier. Um, Another thing that we always look into is like phone service and stuff and usually. Yeah, so uh, we don't do anything special with our phone service really, we just use Verizon. Um, and they have uh, an international plan that, uh, you know, is a pay-as-you-go kind of thing where I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's $10 per line per day. So the plan, rather than, if we were going to be there for more than a week, I, maybe we'd look into getting different SIM cards or maybe even temporary phones. I'm not even sure my current phone takes a SIM card, to be honest with you. Um, but, uh, you know, $10 a day, we probably won't use both phones both days, so I'm guessing we'll run between $50 and $100. You know, to me, that's worth the hassle to not have to go and seek out a separate phone and a separate SIM card. They do, I mean, they do, and the cruise guides, they tell you where you can get SIM cards and stuff, but yeah, with our plan. Yeah, like... I think it's, we probably would just try to just have one phone active um, while we're there. Probably yours, I guess. I, I don't know. So the next thing we're going to talk about is itinerary. Now, you're going to notice that we might look a little bit different, and that's because the camera cut out and we lost some of our video. So we're ending our prep for Antigua trip um, like a week later. Um, but the last thing that we were going to talk about is just our itinerary planning. And realistically, we're not like detailed itinerary planning for this trip once we get there we'll talk to the people that we're sailing with and we'll yeah we can't really have any definite plans because uh you know it's going to be dependent on what other people want to do so i did want to go to barbuda but i don't know if we actually will do that um, my main goal is to i want to get away from visual land because i've never done that in a sailboat but we might do that as just a i think we could we should be able to do that as a day trip like <laughs> just go away from the land and then come back even if we don't go to barbuda overnight um but other than that, that's, that's pretty much it. When we get back, we're, we're planning on taping while we're there, doing a boat tour and like um, sharing a lot of our adventures. So we'll have that coming up um, in the next couple of weeks once we get back. So in the meantime, thanks for visiting. Um, we'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Like and comment below. If you like this video and you want to see more of this adorably grumpy cat, make sure to subscribe and like this video. What else? Comment. Make a comment, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Gingy's going to make a comment right now. Shut Subscribe! <laughs>